Hey everybody, Casmo here, and today we're going to take a look at this device that got sent to me by uh, CubeSim. It is called, and I'm going to read it because I always forget what it's called, the CubeSim Easy Panel EP3U for DCS World. Now, what does that mean? It is a giant uh, front of the Hornet, the FA18 Hornet. So it's got the actual panel with all the switches and stuff, the upfront uh, display. Um, the UFC, and then it's got the uh, three DDIs or MFDs, uh, which are awesome, and we'll talk about that here in a little bit. Uh, but they sent this to me to take a look at and do a quick review on, uh, so we're just gonna get right into it. Now, all of them were boxed up very well, uh, very secure packaging. Uh, it is a big box, it's a heavy box, because it's a lot of stuff. Uh, but opening up, you can see that there is just an absolute ton of parts that come with this. Uh, obviously, each one of the screens is going to come with uh, some capability to mount them, uh, the cables to hook them up, and of course the UFC itself, uh, which is a chonky boy. It also comes with a USB hub, so all of these screens and the UFC, you know, all of them have their own USB cables. They plug into this hub, so you've only got one uh, one thing that you've got to plug into your computer, which makes it super nice because if you're anything like me, you're running out of USB ports uh, as you try to keep up with all the peripherals that you can use for, for DCS and other flight subs. Now, I will say that uh, one thing that is not in the box uh, is instructions, and this kind of leads into some, some drama when trying to put it together. Uh, it's not that it's hard to put together, but uh, it takes you a few minutes to really look at things and try to piece it all together. Um, essentially it comes with this incredibly robust and very heavy, uh, mount that clamps onto your desk, uh, which is uh, in, in and of itself a great design. It, it, it pushes things up away from the desk. Like my setup, I can still, uh, bring my keyboard. It kind of slides out from underneath it, but we'll talk about that later. Um, but it is a little bit weird with all of the components. So there's all these knuckles and um, I don't know how to, how to describe it, but basically it screws in to the different components to the, uh, the screens. And then it's got this, the, these joints that kind of allow you to move stuff around. Um, it gives you some modularity. The problem is I don't know that there's a whole lot of room that you can do anything with the modularity, meaning there's only so many ways you can put this thing together and they all kind of look the same. So I don't know that I would have gone with this route. I'm, I'm hoping maybe as they kind of further develop this, maybe they'll come up with some just some more stiff arms that you just plug into the mount and then brackets out because uh, you'll see that uh, when you put them together, you know, righty tighty, lefty loosey. Well, the right screen, the pressure is always going to be pulling to the left of that screw that's got it uh, attached to the mount. So there's always going to be some pressure. Uh, and I did find that unless you really cinched it down tight, um, kind of messing with it would, would cause it to, to lose its grip and, and sort of dangle on you. Uh, the components themselves are really, uh, really good. The the MFD screens are awesome, and we'll, we'll get into how much I really like those here in a little bit. Uh, but then you've got the, the large UFC. I've got it here because uh, I'm not really using it right now. Uh, but you can see this is a big kid. I mean, I, I got a big head, so it's, you know, as big as my head. Um, it's fairly heavy. Of course, I've got the mount here on the back so that you can uh, attach it, uh, which screws in. I mean, it's very secure. Um, I don't know. I'm assuming it's some sort of injection mold plastic. I mean, the front definitely is. Uh, I see some striation marks on the like the main body of it, so I'm not sure if it's 3D printed or what. But it, it's not it's not flimsy by any stretch of the imagination, though it is plastic. Um, it does have somewhat of a toyish feel. Uh, and I don't say that to be negative at all. Uh, I just mean it's, you know, you wouldn't confuse it with something that got ripped out of the aircraft from a, a texture uh, uh, point standpoint. But uh, the, the buttons, you know, they're not super loose, but they're also not super tight. Um, I don't know how to describe that any any better. Like I said, there's there's a little bit of... You can hear just a little bit of jingle jangle when you, uh, when you move it around. So it's definitely got... Um, some, some looseness in there, but everything works really well. The MFD or the, uh, the, the LCD screens here, they light up, uh, pretty well and it matches again, what happens in game. Uh, you've got all these switches here at the bottom uh, and these all work, you know, and I've plugged it in I had every single button work, uh, these knobs that pull out, you know, they don't feel like they're about to pop out in your hand or anything like that. Like I said, the only things that kind of feel, I guess, loose 
is just these these buttons here. You can kind of kind of hear them while I'm I'm messing around with them. But all in all, a good kit. Uh, just the problem with it, it's just so honking big, and I and I understand why it is. I don't I don't know. I assume that it's a one to one scale or about as close as you can to one to one scale. Um, but it kind of leads into well, where do you put it if you're somewhat of a casual gamer? And we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. Now, all told, putting it together, it took hours. Um, I, I I worked on it kind of sporadically. I worked on it for a couple hours and got the general idea of how it went together, uh, and then spent a little bit more time. I would say all told just kind of messing with it, I would say I probably spent a good four or five hours. And that, that includes just unboxing it, get, making sure I had all the parts, um, kind of fiddling around. Again, without instructions, it's not that it's um, difficult to put together. I think it's just more of a, it'd be better to have an idea of what you should put together first. Because once you start kind of messing with it, then you realize, well, I should have put this part on first and things like that. Uh, the, the last part that I would just complain about with the construction is the USB hub itself. It comes with this 3D printed uh, component that allows you to attach this to the mount. Uh, the problem is it's not very um, obvious right away of where it goes. It took me quite a bit to just kind of stare at it. Maybe I'm just a dullard, but it took me a little bit to kind of figure out where exactly it was supposed to go and how it was supposed to attach, uh, mainly because I had already put everything else together, and so it just didn't seem very obvious. Now, once I did put it all together, uh, that kind of led to where I was just kind of confused and, and uh, maybe a little bit frustrated because uh, as you look at the back here, you've got these these hub ports and stuff. In order for me to use this, I needed it to tilt back just a little bit on the mount. Well, it would run into the actual USB hub. So the hub would be right here. So there's no way to plug the things in. So it, it it's really kind of has to be in straight, at least the way that I had set it up. Maybe, uh, maybe it doesn't need to be that way, but that's just kind of my experience. Now, setting up the screens themselves, um, they make it as easy as they can, meaning that you basically send them some information uh, about your resolution and how your screen set up, and then they do whatever GWiz stuff that they do, and they send you a Lua file, and you just install that, and then it, and then they give you some directions, and that kind of screwed me up because I didn't catch that part, but they give you some directions of how to set up your monitor. So essentially what you're doing is adding three additional monitors to your computer, but they've got to be in a certain uh, arrangement. Now, one thing they didn't tell me in the email was the order in which those screens need to be in. And that's something I kind of had to play with because originally my left and right screens were backwards and I had to kind of figure out why and, and, and remember how to put them in. But essentially for me, I had to put on my left side, my three screens, my main screen that I use, and then my auxiliary screen on the right. Well, the problem is my auxiliary screens on the left. So in order to make all this work, my left screen is on my right and my, yeah, I have to, I have to do stuff with my mouse and you know, it, it's a small price to pay to have the screens work because once you get them lined up properly and you've got the Lua file in there properly, uh, they fire right up. So essentially what happens is they give you this Lua file and they also tell you what you need to set your resolution to within DCS. So you go into DCS, you select cube skim, whoop, cube sim, and then you, uh, set the resolution that they tell you. And then essentially just restart DCS and it sees all of those screens uh, as one, I guess, giant screen or, you know, however, whatever magic goes on behind the scenes. Um, and then you fire it right up and then it sees those screens properly. So you jump into the F18, as long as you've got those things lined up the way they should uh, and in the correct order, then they will come alive on your screen. Now, the aircraft that I tested it on is the F18, the F16, the A10, the Apache. Um, one point, uh, the Apache, it will work for the two... Uh, MPDs left and right, it will not work for the TDAC. I don't know if that's something, maybe I'm doing something wrong or they just haven't programmed it that way or whatever. Uh, I would like to see that where the center screen could actually work as the TDAC screen. Uh, for the Hornet, all three of them work. If you jump in something like the F-16, the A-10, that only works on either side. I did try it in the Harrier. It didn't fire up. I think there's something special you have to do with the Harrier. I don't really know or understand why. Uh, I haven't really dug into it just because I haven't flown the Harrier in quite some time, uh, but I'll definitely have to look into that. Now, as far as the setup itself, what I have been running is actually the three screens uh, without the UFC, uh, mainly because I'm not much of a Hornet driver. Um, again, if I was getting into the Hornet or getting into the Harrier, it would be a great thing to have. Uh, but I did just set up the three screens themselves. You don't have to have the UFC. I've just got them set up uh, right here in front of me. And I tell you what, it has been an absolute game changer. And I was really surprised by that. I didn't know how much I would actually use the screens um, the way I do because I've have you know, like the total controls MPDs, which are great uh, But I find myself not really using them as much as I could because I have to make this transition of I'm looking at the screen over here 
but I'm pushing this button to react to it. That doesn't happen here. You're actually looking down at the button you want to push and you're seeing real time results of what's going on. The LCD screens are terrific. They change color perfectly. I mean, they just, they look like they're, they're screens and you can even use them as other screens. I mean, I've had videos pop up when I'm trying to do some editing or something. It pops up in one of the LCD screens. So um, I don't know, you can maybe have some fun with that too. Now setting up the LCD screens is different than setting up the bezel buttons, right? The, the MPD buttons themselves, that's a fairly easy process. You just plug them in. Uh, you, there's a combination of buttons you need to push and essentially it starts lighting up and you just tell it through a combination of buttons and they give you that in the directions of how to tell it that, well, you're going to be the right screen. You're going to be the left screen. You're going to be uh, the center screen, but, but setting that up is completely different than setting up the actual LCD screens themselves. I feel like I'm saying screens a lot. I'm sorry if I'm confusing you. So let's talk about overall. What do I think? Um, I think it's a good kit. It's expensive. But there's definitely a lot of love and a lot of effort put into it. Um, if you're somebody who's making a full-size sim pit or you want that full experience and you're a Hornet guy or I guess a Harrier guy too because it kind of looks the same, uh, same, same layout, uh, then yeah, I would, I would recommend it. I think it's great. If you're a casual player that, that I kind of am, um, it might be a bit much because for me to use the complete system the way it is, I would have to do a major rehaul uh, renovation to my whole setup to make it work. Uh, and right now I'm just not prepared to do that. Um, again, once I kind of figured out that I could use the three screens as is and not use the UFC, psh, I'm, I'm sold. And like I said, I use it now all the time. Uh, it's a little finicky. Again, if you restart your computer, sometimes it doesn't see the monitors the same way that they were. So you got to go in there and just make sure that everything's arranged properly. Um, but other than that, there's really no overhead that you need to do. You just fire it up. It, it, it starts up right away. So having that capability has been a absolute game changer for me in just a short period of time that I've been using it. So again, just kind of reviewing the quality of the product. I, I like it. Um, there's nothing in there that makes me think this is sort of half-ass. Again, I'm not a real fan of the knuckles and the, the joints. They're just a little finicky and I think there's just too many parts moving there because you've got a screw into one place and you've got a screw in another place and then you've got them meeting at a junction that you've got to tighten down. So if you loosen one spot, you end up you know, loosening in another spot, trying to tighten the first spot down. It just it gets kind of jumbled. Um, I would like to see maybe just some sort of just solid bracket that comes out of the, um, the, the main stanchion, extends out, lets you hook the monitors in. Uh, and, and, you know, maybe have some sort of tilt up and down. But other than that, I don't need any of this other sort of uh, uh, movement in there. And it, maybe that's a holdover from when they were just selling that component without the UFC. You know, I don't I don't know. Uh, but it does give you sort of these extenders and then it gives you these shorter ones. So you can kind of play with it and how you want to how you want to set it up. Um, but construction without the instructions and then with some videos that they have, but the videos aren't really great, you know, for all of the questions you may have. Um, it, it is frustrating once you get on the other side of it and you get it put together and you realize how, how not difficult it is. Um, you know, if you had to do it again, you could do it very quickly. I mean, I took it apart, uh, and then put it back together. It, was, it took just a matter of minutes cause it was a lot simpler having gone through the process once before. Uh, but those first initial put togethers is very frustrating support. Uh, now granted, maybe they were being extra supportive to me cause I was doing the video. Uh, but you know, I was texting back and forth with somebody from there, uh, via messenger and that's how they were kind of giving me some information. Um, but again, the product, uh, support that they're going to give you just by virtue of buying it, uh, the Lua files, um, the import files for the, for the, um, uh, input control inputs for DCS. They'll give you those files for the F18, the F16. You just import them into the game and then you've got them in there. You don't have to, you don't have to go through and map each button individually. It already does it for you. Uh, so all that support is super great and it sort of offsets the frustration to some extent that I had, um, you know, it challenges, it is written in sort of broken English. So you got to kind of translate it. Hopefully uh, somebody can maybe help them out um, and, and maybe kind of rewrite the instructions for them to help out with the, the native English speakers speakers. Cause there are some points where it's like, okay, what exactly are you trying to, to tell me? But at the end of the day, all of the instructions were correct. All the stuff that they sent was valid and it did make everything work. And the last part I'll talk about is just, again, those screens themselves, you know, 
again, I was kind of back and forth about, is this something I would recommend to a casual player? And again, if you're using it completely as it is, you're probably gonna have to do some some moving around. You know, I'm kind of looking over here and thinking about how much higher my screen would have to be to make this work. And you know, the, sc the, the smaller LCD screens are gonna have to drop down. Well, now it's gonna affect my keyboard. Like you really have to have a cockpit set up to use it. But the far as the three screens, which I think you can just buy the three LCD screens without the UFC, I, I, I would recommend it. it. Like I said, it has been an absolute game changer for me to be able to just look down at these screens uh, while I'm playing and, uh, and interact with those directly. It's been it's been very cool. And uh, I'm not sure how much those sell for to do those three screens, but it's something I would look into if you're interested because I really didn't have to do a whole lot of changing to my setup. Um, you know, it I can still use my keyboard. I don't have to move my screen. I can still see everything I've got there. I've lost a little bit of table space, but it wasn't really table space I was using anyway. So anyhow, I feel like I'm rambling just a little bit and I apologize. Um, it's a lot and it's taken me at this point. I've had it for almost a month. In fact, I think over a month at this point that I've had all these components and in between work and real life, it's just been hard to kind of mess with everything. So a lot of this, I'm kind of going off of memory. Um, but overall, I think it's a great kit. Uh, I can't tell you if it's worth it to you to spend as much money as you would need to spend to get it. Uh, if you're building a cockpit that's an F-18 or a Harrier, I, I can't I can't say no. I, th I think it's probably right up your alley and it's going to look good. It's going to be very functional. Again, if you're a casual player, you just got to kind of figure out how much how much effort you want to put into kind of moving stuff around because, uh, again, this thing is chunky. Anyhow, thanks a lot to CubeSim for sending me and trusting me to do a review on their product. Uh, I really, I do enjoy it. Thank you so much for sending that to me. Uh, hopefully, uh, I, I do you guys justice in expressing my thoughts on the product. And uh, hopefully you guys out there who maybe you've been on the fence about it, maybe something I said will, will push you one way or the other and you'll make a uh, decision. So thanks for watching. We'll talk to you guys later.